Hi, welcome back to Tao of Twang. I'm Dave. Notice anything different? Something's gone and something else has taken its place. Boom. <laughs> like, what, what are you pointing at, man? Uh, that old mic, that SM58 is what it was. On that mic stand that's been sitting here for the last year and a half, it's out of here. I've got this set up now. Got this little condenser mic on this boom arm that's adjustable. It's clamped right here to the edge of the desk. I can move it wherever I want. I think it sounds good. This is only the second video I've done with it. I um, mentioned it on um, Patreon last week because I, I got it in the mail right after I'd already done last week's YouTube video. And thanked everybody on there. And let me just say to everyone real quick, happy holidays, however you celebrate this time of year. Uh, we just appreciate you so much and have had so much fun this year. And we're just digging down even deeper into this whole thing now uh, going into um, next year. And part of that is, you know, do, making some upgrades with storage was one of them for, for the files and everything. And uh, computer power and you know a little bit of stuff with the lighting and this mic set up and because of your generosity and support both on here and on patreon um, we're able to do those things and we're able to keep going and hopefully make this better for everybody so from me and my wife both happy holidays appreciate all of you and now let's jam so I didn't do an intro uh, demonstration with the backing track and stuff today, right? We're still going to do what we do on the twang. We're going to get some chords, we're going to figure them out, get them going, and then we're going to improvise over them, right? That's what we do on here. And um, there's a lot of different ways you could go about that process, right? And um, some of them would make sense to others in different ways than, 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 uh, uh, you know, some other folks, right? Um, that's because everybody has different kinds of learning styles, different uh, experiences of education with music and so forth, guitar and other things. And, you know, we're trying to put all that together. We're trying to consolidate that whole kind of knowledge base that we have, see what our skills are, see what we need to do to, you know, get further into our music. And for some of us, that the, 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 one of the biggest strengths that we have is just listening to music and, and loving it and internalizing it our whole life, right? And so getting from that kind of, you know, when you listen to music, you understand it, you see the, pic, the picture in your head, you feel it, There's, it it's a sort of a, you see, you feel the landscape of it, You're, it's imaginative and so forth. Sometimes, you know, at different stages, when we go to have that experience on our instrument, we feel blocked or something from it, right? So what we want to do is try to kind of sneak up on this stuff in different ways, see what works for you. Here's one way we could do that. And this really gets into like, um, this will have different meaning for people at different levels and so forth. Um, but go ahead and go through this 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 process because no matter where you are with your development and your ear training and stuff there's something here for you it's worth the time right and for some of you it could be really really beneficial uh, and 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 create a lot of positive change for you so let's put this track on let's say we're just listening to something we don't even see we haven't seen anybody play it we haven't been told what the chords are and so forth, right? Usually I do all that for us before we even start, right? And you're already kind of in my world, right? But by the time I play that demo and stuff at the beginning, it's kind of like that's my interpretation of it, right? And I don't want you to always be caught up in that, right? This is where you, how you start from scratch. So here's our song. It's, it's very repetitive, which serves us... <laughs> well on this channel um and so you know how do you how do we figure out the chords but look for the bass note and 
Now, different bass, more than one bass note will make sense, right? But listen for that. See, if I listen, if it goes up. Okay, now I don't want to be silly. That's me sort of acting as if I didn't already know what the chords were, right? But the important thing is here is that you trust your ear. I don't care if it takes, you know, 30 seconds or 10 minutes. See if you can get that, add a fifth to each one and, and you, you'll really be able to kind of nail it down. It'll, it'll um, prune out the other candidates that aren't really the chord. just that power chord shape, right? Now the next quality that we want to search for in each chord is whether it's a major or minor. There's other kinds of chords too, but in a lot of popular music and in this piece, um, it's going to be one of those two. like it was a reach like mm, yeah but you know you already know what they are I can kind of follow because I can see what you're doing you know that little process that we just went through though start doing that with different things just take a song that that a, a song that you like off of the uh, you know uh, that you have a recording of don't look up the court right away right so easy to do that these days. See if you can, you know, start, you know, picking those out and use that baseline technique to track them down. You might surprise yourself how successful you would be with this. And, you know, sometimes when you've got, you know, four songs to learn before the party or whatever, you know, it, just look them up. <laughs> right? you know, I'm not saying not to use technology and information, but don't let it rob you of these uh, developmental exper experiences that you need for your ear to really do this stuff, okay? So, after that now, um, like, okay, hey, get somebody else to come over and throw these chords down or make a loop or something or take a backing track off the end of this video, which will be there. And it's like, cool, I can play through the chords. I got a little rhythm thing going. I'm, I got my own vibe going, right? And, um, but now, like, what about the improv part? Like, how am I going to decide what scales and stuff to use for this, all right? Now, there's a bunch of different things that could happen in, in, in response to that question, right? That this is by no means the... The, uh, the, 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 the one and only way to do it, but it's one way. Now, what we can do, and this will, this again, will be different for folks at different stages is we, now that we have these triads, A major, B minor, D major, and E minor, they're all major except the B is minor. Now we can hunt down our triad tones for each one of those. And you need paper and pen right now. Hopefully it's sitting right in front of you where you practice because you're writing down stuff and figuring stuff out all the time, <laughs> right? Um, and jot down the triad tones for each one. Now I'm going to put a slide up here in a minute that's got all three of them in it. But here's how you do that. Well, there's four chords. I'm sorry. I, I left one of them out because it's so, two of them are so similar. 
it almost was seems simpler to just exclude one of them. Um, but starting with the A, it's a major triad. So A is my root. That's the major third. And again, everybody out there will have different ways of establishing, you know, these facts, right? But, you know, you take a little piece of that uh, uh, bar chord, right? A, C sharp is the major third, and then E is the fifth. Jot those down. A, C sharp, E. Okay? Next line. Go to the next chord. B. We've already done the work and determined that it's minor. Right? So, triad. One, the root, B. A minor third. Is the note is D. And then the fifth is F sharp. B, D, F sharp. Jot them down. Okay, now that D shares so many qualities and notes and so uh, composition with that B minor, we're just going to skip over it, right? Don't worry about that. Um, you can go ahead and do a little analysis of it, though, just because you might want to, you know, use the... Uh, uh, over that part of the progression, you might want to just play a straight up triad, you know, so go ahead and there's two octaves of it, root, major, third, <laughs> I should sing more what the notes actually are, right, D, F sharp, A, oh, sorry, D, when I start singing, my brain like switches off a different place or something. So, uh, or in the, and then D, F sharp, A. See how that has notes in common with the B minor? Okay. Go to that E, all right? Because there's some notes in there that we haven't really gotten to yet. So E, it's a major triad, so our major third will be... G sharp and B. Okay. Now, just doing this analysis, you're already preparing to, you know, play some, um, improvise some melody because you could just literally use um, those notes with respect to the chords as they uh, appear in the progression, like this. It's got to kind of wait. So. written down there on your piece of paper. I hope that that actually happened. And if we take those nine, a couple of them have duplicates. I've got mine right here. Uh, there's two B's, looks like, in there, and there's two E's. So we can kind of cancel out one of those for each, right? And that leaves us with seven notes. Now, if we just put them in order, you know, um, a, B, C, D, E, F, G. And we've been set up for success <laughs> on this one, okay? We happen to have selected a key where A is the first one, right? 
but this would work for any key because those notes, those, that alphabet would always be in the same order. Don't get hung up on that right at the moment. So if we put these in order, we get a sequence like this. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. Okay. Now that if we play those notes, we get an A major scale. So now if that's sort of like, oh, okay, now that wasn't that clever or whatever. Great. Because you've already got some understanding of that, but you know, that, lets you see how a diatonic progression like this really, you know, is made of the same stuff as the chords, right? And it, 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 it presents the first go-to option for improvisation, the A major scale. Wait for it to come around here. You could start anywhere, but... Just using that scale, just ask yourself, well, okay, you know, what do I do? I've got, I've got do I just play the scale? Sure. This is where you are going to spend a lot of time exploring on your own. And you've got to put that time in. You've got to let yourself open up to making those choices and not just, you know, oh, I need a lick to play right here. And you know, if, if you're depending on where you are with everything, that might come rather quickly. If you're new to this, just keep investing in that, right? And here's a couple of um, kind of uh, routine things that you can do to get that going. Play adjacent notes. But change direction. that demo there you know a couple times if you want don't get hung up on what I did there just use those ideas 
get that scale under your fingers and then start backing up those adjacent notes and moving around. You go up and down this direction as well as up and down in this dimension. And you will discover, you know, you will hit many odd sounding <laughs> notes along the way, but your ear will sort them out. And if you really get kind of lost with your ear, just go back to playing the full scale. <laughs> There at the end of that last piece uh, bit that I was playing, I did more of like an A uh, major pentatonic uh, uh, selection of notes, which sounded nice. And it started to sound a little bit more, um, you know, uh, stylized, right? And we're going to work on that on um, Patreon this week. So kind of a longer video here. And, you know, if you're, if you're still hanging in there, um, I've got a little bit of this backing track for you to play over, but I also encourage you to make your own loop and start using this whole process that we did today as often as you can to um, figure out things for yourself and start creating your own uh, uh, progressions. You know, it doesn't have to have a lot of chords. It can be a DCG, you know, uh, kind of deal or something. That would be great. So... Hope this helps. Happy holidays again. Thank you. And see you next time.